Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Ink Post podcast. Today, I'm here with one of our former students. She took the online workshop, and she also came in person. She is very dedicated. She is very inspiring. So I asked her to get on the podcast with us today because I wanted you guys to be able to relate to her story. I wanted her to be able to share her story and hopefully inspire some of you that are in the platform and working with us to improve your permanent makeup journey. Her name is Sarah Daisy. She's from California. And I had such a pleasure having her as a student because she is just really positive and really dedicated. She does a lot, like she did every single step I recommended as far as like doing her homework and just coming in and she, did, she didn't miss a beat, okay? And I feel like that is a great person to have on the podcast because I want them to share with you how they managed to grow from switching careers to having a career in permanent makeup and also like going through the transition phase between one career to the other and making it possible. So I would love to welcome Sarah Daisy. Hi. Hey, girl. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So you're from California before yes. permanent makeup. What, what was your career like? Well, I've been a surgical tech. So like in the medical field for the last 11 years. Uh, but during COVID I had moved to Texas. So when I came across like your videos, I was actually living in Dallas. So I think when I met you, I was like living in Dallas and I moved back. Yeah. So it's been a journey That's for awesome. sure. Since the last time I saw you a couple of years ago. But it, it, I think it was, was it a couple of years already or one year? No, it's been I think two. It was one year. No, it's been two. It was 2021. Really? Yeah. Or 22, I believe. I w it was October of 2021, I believe. <laughs> I should know, but I don't. Oh my God. Wait, the time flies so fast. That's actually really insane. Yeah. Yeah. So did you start like collecting clients in Texas and then you moved to California or you weren't like taking clients in Texas? No. So I took your class in October. Uh, I wish I remember the year. God, I, I want to say it was probably 2022 22. if it was. Yeah, it was 2022. Um, but at the moment it was like winter time. So I was really um, busy with work, especially because during that season, um, it's the most busiest. So I wasn't planning on doing anything until the following year, January. And then um, something happened, family emergency, and then I had to like put PMU on hold for almost six months. So for six months or longer, I didn't do anything. Um, and I almost thought that dream yeah. was dead. Um, and then something in me just kept saying like, no, don't give up, don't go. You know, cause it's like, I already had a cushion job. I had been doing it for so many years. So there was really no like real reason why I had to, you know, switch careers um but something in me just kept saying don't give up because it was it was difficult it's definitely difficult so it wasn't until officially like august i would say of last year when i officially mm -hmm. took it on 100 percent commitment and then wow so so it's been like one year of full commitment and honestly like i i will say so many people that take our class feel so guilty and I get emails all the time like, hey, I'm taking this amount of time off um, yeah. because uh, I had a baby or a family emergency or like so many different things will happen that I feel like they just take the time off and they feel guilty about it and they even feel the need to like apologize <laughs> I to me. The same. And I like, felt the same, right? Yeah, because it almost, yeah. I felt guilty like I had wasted your time or just ashamed also, but yeah and and i feel like i get those all the time and honestly like i never I, I i'm like a human just like anybody else like things happen in people's life where like your career is gonna take the back seat and then your family's gonna be priority whether it's like a you know a newborn or a you know a, somebody needs you or something like that so i mean I think it's hard enough switching careers from one to the other. So I feel like uh, like you have to give yourself the grace to be like, okay, like I, I physically cannot do this right now. Mm -hmm. But also it's so awesome that you had the inspiration to be like, okay, it's been six months, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. So I feel like that spark is 
also like people need that as well because I do have people taking the course dropping it and then never coming back to so it's not like oh everybody takes a break like some people do end up dropping it um and I'm just glad you you didn't right and maybe they realize oh this isn't for me and I knew that wasn't the case for me I knew it wasn't that I personally didn't like it it's just I felt defeated after the class I'm gonna be 100% honest you you saw it you know I thought I was gonna just pick up something and be like oh I'm gonna be good at this I'm good at pretty much everything I do it's how hard can it be you made it look easy and it wasn't which yeah. in the in turn it makes it more satisfying when you master it um, so I just remember leaving feeling like defeated but also like encouraged to like not give up because it made me feel like wow this is so hard how good is it gonna feel like when I can master this but yeah there, I did step away for a couple months and it just kept like and the, I but the thing is I never took down my setup so it's like daily I would see like the mannequin and the stuff and it's just like oh I'll get to it one day you know I'll get to it one day wait that's a really good tip so mm -hmm. so okay I think if everybody does that, it will stay in their life. Actually, yeah. I, like that is, some, that is something I'm going to start recommending. Like if somebody ever asks me for encouragement, I'm going to always remember that, that you did that. Yeah. And that was what helped you like go to the next level. Yeah. Like having uh, a designated place where you practice and then also like I never broke it down. I never just like put it away out of sight, out of mind. It's like, no, it stayed there and it reminded me daily. <laughs> Of like, come on, girl, don't give up. You said you weren't gonna give up. Yeah, that would do it, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you got back into permanent makeup, you said in August, and what what did that mean for you? Like, what did getting back into it mean? Um, so, because I was going through something with uh, a grief of a family member passing, I, had to move back to California, not by choice. So I was already in a very, like not a good state of mind. So I was already feeling, you know, I'm grieving the loss of my brother. I'm moving back to a state that I thought, you know, I had left behind. It's just a lot of things that brought me down like emotionally into a space where I was like, what am I gonna do to, to make myself happy again? Like, am I just gonna go through life, just going through the motions, you know? And I really, really sat down. It's like, you know, when you're dealing with grief, you, you kind of think of life in this very drastic way of like, you know, life is not forever. Eventually my time's also gonna come. So it's like, what do I wanna do that is gonna make my life here enjoyable? So I'm in a new job, in a new city, like all these things, you know. I'm like, no, I'm going to pursue this. And I kind of went like 100%, like full force kind of maniac about it, where it's like, I just started buying everything I needed for, you know, the supplies, like the chair, the, all the inks. I just went full force. Like I bet on myself pretty much without the commitment of like, oh yeah, I know for sure it's going to happen. Um, so ever since then, I've just that I feel like helped me move forward because it's like, oh, I, I pretty much committed myself, you know, so it's like now I'm going to make it win. I'm going to make it work, I meant. Yeah, no, 100 yeah. percent. I mean, I'm I'm a big believer in building the ship or building the whatever. And then mm -hmm. the God will bring what need what like the vessel that you built god will make it work as long as he sees that you put everything you need in like that's actually with every single project we go full force even like sometimes you need to do some testing to prove the thing or whatever but if i really believe in something like i will spend all the time and all the money i need to like make sure this thing ends up working like failure is not an option so right. i feel like you had that mentality so like, what was it like taking your first model after making all the investments? Like, how was that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but every step is a learning experience. So, you know, from instructors like you and a lot of forums that I've read, everyone who's been doing it for years had already wrote online, like encouraging words, like it's not easy for anyone. So 
with that in mind, I stopped beating myself up and being like, you have to be good at it. You, you know, because it's an art. You feel like, oh, either you have it or you don't. You're gifted or you're not. But I just kept coming across like videos on, on the internet like of all, all kinds of things where like inspirational people who were blind or didn't have an arm and they just the thing that they just kept saying is practice, like keep practicing. And it's like a skill that you can develop. So that's just something that I kept in mind. So just keep practicing. And then second nature, you had like muscle memory and it just became a little bit easier. And of course, I'm not where I want to be because that takes years of practice, but it's definitely progress where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in the right direction. Like I'm on the right path. Yeah. No, 100%. And like, how did it feel taking your first person? Were you on your own? Were you with a mentor? Like, oh how many workshops or other classes? Like, okay, like after the workshop, I don't you got the supplies. Say who and my, who... <laughs> I love my mom. No, Actually, I'm, I'm going to say no, who but it is. Mom, she, but she was mine too. My first yeah. person was my mom. Exactly. Yeah. Your number one supporter, your mom. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, my mom's like, just practice on me. I was like, are you sure? She's like, yes. I was like, I need to figure out needle depth. I need to like be comfortable with it. Um, luckily, I used ink that wasn't like permanent, and I didn't go deep, so I, you know, no harm was made or anything like that. Um, so I appreciate my mom, but yeah, that was my next model. And then before, after that, I feel like okay, let me practice definitely more and more on skin. So I just kept okay before I took on someone like other models. Okay. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I remember when I first took my mom as a client, even though she was my mom, I, so I learned microblading first. Like that was the first skill I've ever mm -hmm. learned. That was the first time I touched somebody's face with like a sharp object, you know what I'm saying? With ink. And I was so scared. I was literally sweating. I was literally sweating and it was just me and my mom in a room and she was like, what? like, just go for it. Like my mom has a tough heart, yeah, you know, exactly. my mom. She just kept saying, just do it do it <laughs> yeah really and i feel like it's their generation too like they yeah i feel like our moms like f my mom was born in 1970 like she's like that generation mm -hmm. i feel like she moved to a new country at like 30 she she knows what it's like to have a dream and want somebody to push you to do it and like she's one of those people that is like so strong so she expects everybody to like be as strong as her right yeah and so she she has this attitude of like you went to new york you took a training with your trainer you you've been busting your ass learning online like just do it just i'm literally here for you i know this might hurt but i trust you you've been an artist your whole life like moms are the best you know and i bet your mom was the same way with you um, and even with all that encouragement, I remember my first model where like I had no instructor there. I just had my certificate. Um, it was so scary. Like I, I think it took me four hours. Yeah, definitely. I think the same for me. Yeah, it was definitely nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if maybe having some experience in the medical field helped me a little bit. So it's like I'm around blood and surgery all the time. So I was mainly i just kept thinking about like the outcome like i hope it looks good and yes they did look okay and i sh you know it sucks admitting that you know that it's not your greatest work or whatever it doesn't look like ig yeah um but i've seen really bad work so it wasn't i knew i was in the right track i'm like okay it doesn't look like that it's i'm on this is decent so just you know, I have the eye of like making sure symmetry looks good, the, the proportions look good, thickness wise, like for the client, things like that. So I'm like, if I got those skills, that's might you know, some people might find it harder to, to like get down. I'm like, then yeah, I should be okay. Yeah, no, that's amazing. <laughs> um, that that's kind of that was my mindset too. I had like such a confidence that because I've been doing henna and like I've been drawing my whole life and like I had this like preconceived like thing that I was like naturally talented. And it, looking back at my work, I was like, "Girl, you are not naturally talented <laughs> because those brows that I did like the first few months of my career were so bad. Like, I wish I could find pictures of them. I mean, like people at the time thought that they were decent because nobody was doing microblading. And I think that saved my ass. 
But if I was to compete in this environment now where like everybody, it like there's so many amazing artists in the industry right now, I would be so much harder on myself because like everyone's doing it and everyone's amazing. So I can only like imagine how much pressure that is on like new students, but you have to give yourself the grace to like be decent in the beginning, just like mm -hmm. be like the par or whatever. And like the more you do it, it will definitely get there. Like um, as long as you keep practicing and you did and like your work has improved so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And like, I love that you didn't stop learning and like you look like you're the type that watches a bunch of like YouTube videos and follows a bunch of trainers and like you're not stuck to just like one thing you're like okay I'm gonna learn here and there and there and like I've been watching your Instagram and I feel like that's so good because every single trainer or every single um like online course you take or every single YouTube video is gonna teach you one more thing that you didn't know before because everybody does it a little bit differently and I feel like it's good to see like what might click for you yeah Totally. um yeah so i think what i want to say is like what do you feel like do you feel like there was a moment where you took okay you took your mom you took a few, few clients do you feel like there was a client where like something really clicked and you're like okay you know what i'm starting to get the hang of this because i feel like that might have happened for you because your work took like a progressive like leap um, yes, I did have one client. You know what actually helped? Um, I went back to like literally the fundamentals, pen and paper. So I, you know, was, I didn't want to get messy with ink. And I'm like, let me just practice on pen and paper. And I did like pages of pages of just pattern with the paper. So because I, my mind was able to connect it with pattern and like the same thing that a machine would do with a needle your pencil's going to do on paper so like if i would sketch a line and my line was not straight i would just erase it you can't do that with tattoo but my muscle was like slowly and slowly making straighter lines and then i would shade it in just like the little things you have to think about like we just want the end goal and i was just like just go backwards so like um i think when I spent like, I think a whole weekend, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I didn't like leave the house. And I was just had the TV on. I was just like sitting on my couch, just like drawing brows for hours and days before I had like the next client. And then, you know, I, I took her and I was like, wow, these actually look decent. Um, I wish I would have saturated them a little bit more, but you know, baby steps, like I know she's going to come back and I can do that. But yeah, like the pattern was there, the the movement of my hand, so like the machine. I think that really, really helped, like doing paper and pencil first before you want to do a machine, you know? Like get that fundamental first. It, it makes me so happy that you're saying that, literally, because oh. I tell my <laughs> students all the time, I tell them all the time, like, please just practice your patterns with a simple paper and pencil. And for yes. some reason, there's something like that doesn't resonate with that because they're like they can't imagine that because you know how sometimes the patterns on paper like even on my practice skins people always say like how is this this doesn't look like an eyebrow like mm -hmm. a lot of times like they look like cartoonish they look too um big they look um you know like a lot of people say like how would that look on like they can't imagine the pattern when it's on a paper they can't imagine it on someone's eyebrow but I always tell them, like, if you can't even draw the pattern on a big piece of paper with, with like a pencil where you can erase, like, how do you expect to tattoo it in on a very narrow, like, eyebrow mm -hmm. space is so small and like, we put so much detail in our work, like doing a really t detailed tattoo is really difficult, um, with, especially when you don't want the lines to merge and all this stuff. So I tell people all the time, like, if you can't do it with a pencil, then you're not going to be able to do it with a machine um and i'm just so glad that you found that out for yourself you're like i'm gonna just warm up like war yeah. you did that like a day before your client came right a couple of days before and i think what helps is finding um a sheet that has 
dotted brow shapes. So you're not spending your time drawing the shape. What you're really spending your time right. is practicing the pattern. So I, I printed out like sheets of paper where they already have like 12 rows of brows, but they're dotted. So they're faintly, you can barely faintly see the, the shape. And what you're practicing yeah. is like the front. How do you want your front to look? Because there's so many patterns, you know? So I was just experimenting. Why not? You have all day, you have all the hours, fucking start drawing whatever. And I was just like, do I like it when they go like this? Let me do three like this. Like, no, I don't like that. Erase it, do another section. So when they look cartoony, um, it's because you're what you're really looking at is how the, the, sh the brow is like sh moving, like, Look at how it's being swooped up. And like, the, you're just really practicing that. You're not really gonna do that on a person, but you're just, um, you know, getting the flow of your hand movement, things like that. So yeah, I did that for maybe three days for hours before I had the, the client. Yeah, and then you sat down with the client and you had this like big, oh my God, I'm actually like yeah, doing it. If you, and... Yeah, yeah, if you have the pattern yeah, down, huh? No, I said that's awesome. Go ahead. Yeah. No, having the pattern down, that was the most hardest part. Because actually, I forgot to mention when you asked me, like, when I had my first client, how panic. I, I don't know why I didn't remember this, but I was so panicked when after my first wipe, every first experience is like, where is it? I don't see it. Then also my my dots, my guide were gone. So like, I'm panicking on that. But if you have the pattern and you've you've practiced like on paper, then you're not worried about it because you just have the eye for it. But at the beginning when it's like I, you're- I, I love everything that you're saying, literally, because you have to memorize the patterns. You really do. Um, yeah. I have, I have so many patterns memorized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do like pattern six, pattern three, and it was fun. Yeah. I still do it. Like, I love that. I still, yeah. <laughs> um no i'm just i'm just laughing because i feel like there's a time delay between our voices and i feel like we keep talking over oh, each other okay. and i don't mean to, i don't mean to talk over you but i hear you like two seconds later so then i start talking because i think you paused oh okay um, yeah, yeah. but i'm so sorry no, uh, <laughs> um okay so i think i i love that we went over your aha moment basically and um, I want to talk about a little bit like how you manifested going from a full time medical um, assistant to now being in the phase where you're like doing all you're still doing medical assisting because that's like still your main source of income, but you're also using that as like a cushion, as you said, to fully transition into permanent makeup, which I always tell people don't just quit your job like cold turkey. You can't just like quit your job cold turkey and then um, go go in and like you don't have clients and have rent to a studio and like no one and some people do that. Like it's something that I have to tell people all the time. Like you need to slowly transition yourself from point A to point B. Like it's not going to be a instant thing like you have to take the class, take the training, buy the supplies and have your main source of income support that. And, you know, use your off days to practice for your like new side job. And your main job should be supporting you for at least probably like one or two years in the beginning. Um, and if it takes more than that or less than that, it's totally like your journey. There is no journey that's like replicatable. There's no blueprint to how you're going to tr transition. Because like, first of all, like, I don't think any of us know where somebody's at in the beginning and where they want to like end up. Like, I don't know their dream. I'm not in their head. Mm -hmm. And I also don't know how much like they're making at this job. So like, I can't really give them advice on that. So like, I think everybody needs to know okay, how much time can I dedicate? How much money can I like take out of um, my check and put it into investing in my other business? Because really it's like a time and money investment. And I feel like the, there is nobody that can advise on that than like the person themselves because you have to really just know your situation and stuff like that. And I feel like you did that. Like you kind of sat down with yourself. You're like, okay, like this is where I am. This is where I want to be. And then like you, you're very like good at like slowly 
moving yourself in that direction and you're like i noticed that you talk a lot about like manifesting things for yourself which ultimately mean that you know what you want which i think a lot of people don't i think knowing what you want is so underrated like sometimes even like millionaires will be in interviews and they'll be like you know somebody will ask them like what's your next goal and they'll tell them their goal and then they'll be like why and i've had that happen to me too um where like somebody asked me like why why are you doing this and i'm just like i don't know i just like it or like i just don't know sometimes you just don't know what you want or why you want it and i feel like doing that homework is so important and i just feel like when we talked in previous conversations you you did that for yourself and I love that. So I wanna talk about like what that transition was like for you and like like your journaling habits, like your healthy habits as far as like loving yourself enough to give yourself the grace and time to practice and all that, like how was that? Um, yeah, so if you're thinking about transitioning into permanent makeup and you're not sure if this is like a right career move for you um starting slow is best so like taking the class seeing if how do you feel during the class do you feel inspired you know yes it's going to be difficult but do you see yourself like in the future doing this so when i took your class i already saw myself at the end having my own studio doing what you were doing so like the end goal i had already envisioned it so but i was million miles like behind so so for the person who's like thinking about it you have to like you only know yourself you only know your journey um so i can't really advise but for myself i knew that quitting cold turkey would not work for me because i didn't have clientele i think if you're like a makeup artist you're already an esthetician you already have clients and you want to transition it may be different for you but for me, I knew it wasn't going to work. It wasn't like I was going to open and then all of a sudden I was going to get clients. Yes, I wanted to believe that, but that wasn't the case. So I knew I had to like work backwards and um, slowly start to build, even though I wanted to like already do it, you know? So um, I think having the vision is the most important part like do you see yourself and then doing it and then any obstacle that comes along the way you're just gonna think of a a, a a solution for it because it's just an obstacle it's just that it's just something that's temporary so i had a lot of obstacles but none of it deter me enough to want to say like this is it because i knew at the end of the day like there what is the worst that can happen and you just go back to your job and I thought, okay, well, then I just go back to my job. But, like, I really, really didn't want to do that. So I was like, no, I don't want to just go back to teching. I've been doing it. It's, like, it's, it's not passionate anymore. So it's like, no, I have to make this work because I want it to work. Not because I have to, but, like, I really, really see myself doing so much more. And, like, I'm just at the beginning of the journey. So yeah no that's amazing and you manifested so much so far like i feel like a studio for you was like a big dream and like you mm -hmm. finally have a space where you can create and you went through like probably a, a struggle to get like the licensings for everything and make everything professional and like um i i want you to talk about like some of the habits that you did to like get to that stage because like i feel like that's a dream for a lot of students is to just like eventually have enough courage or enough like clientele or enough equipment to mm -hmm. eventually like open a studio and take take some uh clients there and it's not going to be super busy in the beginning but it, it's it's such a big forward step to like have a key to your own like sacred space to create on other people and i know yeah. the feeling of like Right, furnishing it and no matter how small or how big or like I, you know i started out in my garage really that was my first studio was like my parents garage so like it even still was my luxury sink. because it's like some people don't even have homes or that that as an option so you gotta yeah think about really. like where you are and then like work with what you have and that's that's beautiful like i wish i had that option you well, know 
No, 100, but I was 16 years old, Yeah, you know, and I wasn't really tattooing. I don't think I would tattoo out of a garage, but I was doing makeup and like waxing and like my friends wouldn't mind coming to the garage. Mm -hmm. So it was fine. Right. I mean, we lived, we lived in a very like, um, like modest home, you know, we weren't, we were like, my parents immigrated to the States and. 2003 so for a long time we lived very very like just like try to make an ends meet and i never really felt it because my parents were really really hard working but we didn't have much at all growing up so um just like it it wasn't it wasn't like a fancy garage at all. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. there was like a little AC unit like sticking out of the like window. It was so hot in there. It wasn't finished at all. Like it was just dry. You know, it, it wasn't like it. But as you said, it was still a luxury because it was more than like some people didn't have that too. Mm -hmm. So um, working with what you have is so important. And I just wanted to like. How did you manifest going from um, like not having clients, not having the skill to like where you are now with something that I feel like you should really be proud of because it's hard to get your own space and be able to like say, okay, yeah, like come to my studio. Like that's such a dream. Like how, what, like do, you. I know you yeah. journal, like I want you to talk about those things. Yeah. Um, so in my mind and with anything that you want, you kind of, I can't remember the quote, I was trying to remember it, but um, anything that's for me is gonna come easily. And if it's hard and difficult, then it's not for me. So uh, before I found my space, um, which I feel like is for me, you know, I feel like when I saw my space immediately, I thought, oh, this was made for me. The size is small, the rent is affordable. It has a big front window. It's exactly what I wanted. So all these little things that made me feel like, oh, this is for me. Because in my mind, um, when I was already like looking at spaces, they were really expensive um, or they felt very dungeony where I'm renting a space for somebody, but there's like no windows. I just didn't envision myself there. So having like a vision or like a standard of what you want but then also understanding you have limits because it's like you of course i want like a a space that's luxurious and like beautiful and all that but it's like okay but that's not in the budget but i'm not going to compromise my wants though so it's like i would look for the space spend hours online um it's almost like um if you know what you want you're gonna it's gonna become a priority it's gonna become an obsession you're gonna like look online for like spaces so when i found that space instantly i knew like oh i can envision myself there so really it starts in the mind like you know in your heart also like when you see something and it's for you then everything's just starts lining up and it just becomes too easy where you become like skeptical where everything's like getting approved then you know like oh, okay then i'm in the right space but then if i started to get like obstacles of like management not being easy or like then i would have walked away from it because i would have thought like oh this isn't for me then so i always remember yeah. like like you have a pretty good like you have a good intuition i feel yeah so yeah exactly so like trusting yourself and being able to walk away from situations and it, it really wasn't that easy because other things had failed before i found this space so like um, I wanted to partner up with um, a friend who also did this and that didn't go through. So like, you're gonna, like a lot of people say, you have a lot of like failures, but you know, if you just stay positive and try to see like the, the, the big picture, if you don't lose sight of that, then you just keep moving the ball, whichever way it's going, just keep moving it forward or whatever. So yeah, yeah. Journaling does help. I haven't done it as much recently. I've been really um, same. I'm so yeah. guilty. <laughs> Just I've been so busy moving, but in my mind, it's like meditating. I guess um, I think I, I write more when I'm in a low state, and I, I need to express like my 
my grief or like my negative state. Cause when I look back, I'm like, wow, am I always this sad? <laughs> like when I'm reading, but it's like, I find like in the moments of, of down is when I journal the most. So, but when I'm high, I'm like, okay, I'm just riding the wave. You know, I haven't journaled in a while, but yeah. I definitely recommend well, you it. know what? I, I'm going to challenge you to journal when you're on your like highest high. Right. Because I'm um, no, because that's actually really worked for me. Like insanely okay. well. Like when right, I go back you through my to journal, write when you're grateful, not just when you're desperate. <laughs> well, no, but it's not even that. I feel like it's like a manifestation hack. Because if you're mm -hmm. already manifesting and like you're only journaling when you're like low, but like I'm sure that you're writing as when you're low, like some positive things in between. Yes. And if that's working mm -hmm. out for you, then like I guarantee you, if you take a pen and paper and like journal on a like a higher frequency. And like, r like when you're feeling grateful and stuff, like, right, I'm grateful for this. I want this in the beginning. Like, I want this later, but this is what I'm grateful for now. And just like have a very happy, like paper. There's something magical about that, I swear. Um, and I always try to tell people that like, for some reason, the, like, I don't want to sound like witchy or whatever, but like, what really is a spell? <laughs> it's like spelling words on right. a paper that literally right. is a spell mm -hmm. so when you're like writing something with that frequency it really just like you'll feel it things will oh, start to move okay. really 100 percent. writing is spiritual there's no doubt about it even if you are atheist um logos writing it's something that transcends like humanity so like when you write these thoughts come to mind as i'm writing i'm like oh, i didn't even think about that until I started writing because it's almost like something takes over. It could, it, it's almost like two are dancing. Yes, it's me, it's my emotions. As I'm writing how sad I am, as I'm writing how horrible I feel, then the little light comes in and it's like, but this is what I should be doing or this is what I could do. So yeah, 100%, like it is a spiritual thing oh, to I love to how journal. you worded that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to save that clip. I'm going to save that little bit that you just said. I hope it's good. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh. Um, okay. Well, I, f I feel like um, I'm trying to like see because like we're at minute 36 and I'm trying to see like what we didn't like really hit on because I love I love everything we shared so far from like taking your first client to having your own studio to like starting to get the bull rolling and like transitioning from point a to point b like i don't know it's so nice i guess is there something that you feel like we sh didn't mention that we should at all no i feel like we hit every topic um i wonder like what what like students have come to you um with questions like maybe their struggles that maybe I can relate to or something that we have. I think people struggle in the beginning, like that I hear all the time is like, how can I get, how can I get more clients in the beginning? I mean, yeah, I'm on that same boat, but like you said, no one's gonna, I just already know that no one's gonna trust me. So I just have to accept that and yeah. takes time. Are you doing like smaller services at yeah. all? Yeah. And also you got to take free models and you know, they're trusting you. So you have to, you know, accept that. Get pictures, make free people, exactly. mm -hmm. do cheaper services, do discounts. Like the beginning is the hardest, but honestly, it really does pay off. Once the ball is rolling and you have a good reputation and like you're getting recommended by like, let's say the doctor that you work for or yeah, like, I you mean, know, yeah. you're already in that field. Um, I think, you know, things will start moving along but the beginning is always hard for everybody i always say though like don't run to um promote the work that you first 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 start doing like do like at least 20 models before running an ad on your work just because it's not your best work so i feel like don't give people that first impression of like oh that person like isn't that good because mm -hmm. like staying under the radar and practicing is actually a blessing so like people are always so mad that they're not popular but it's like i i've had that issue too where like i'm always like god like 
you know, when I was when I was growing my brand and when I was growing like my company, I was always like, God, like I'm doing everything I can. How come like I'm not blowing up? How come how come it's not like working out? Like what what am I doing? Like and I always had this like, you know, that light that you talked about, that little voice. Mm -hmm. I always had that little voice tell me that it was it just wasn't my time yet. It just wasn't mm -hmm. my time yet. And I was like, what do you mean it's not my time yet? Like I would argue with my own self, like how is how can this be? And then when I finally got to like a good enough skill that I guess the universe approved of or whatever, then I started seeing more followers and more likes and like some of my reels started doing better and all this stuff. And I'm so grateful that I didn't start getting like as much clientele and as much followers like and stuff like that in the beginning because I wasn't like my best self. So maybe God wanted me to like present my best version of myself. So I always tell that to like my students too, is like, do you really want to blow up for like not doing your best work? Like, is that what you want to blow up for? And they're like, no. So I'm like, be patient. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like we covered everything. I think the only, the only thing that's in my mind okay. is like, I, I think you took, was your first class an online class or like an in-person class? Your class. Was my first I class. was your first class. Yeah. We didn't talk That's about awesome. how I came across, like, even the idea of transitioning or how I met you. Remember? Oh, I planted the seed in your head. Yes. So I'm the I troublemaker. Was... <laughs> so when I um, moved to Dallas, I was in um, doing labor and delivery at night. So it was my first time ever doing like night shifts. So I was working from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and I was depressed to say the least. Like I was just not happy. Um, and it's, it's not easy to admit at the time. I didn't think I knew what it was, but I was just very down. Like I knew just, you know, like if you're going to work and you hate it, it's, it's a horrible feeling and it's, not the work that you do or anyone's fault, it's just something internal. So I was on YouTube and I, your video popped up and I was like, microblading is over, nanobrows is in. So I'm like, what is nanobrows, you know? So I looked at your course and I'm like, this is actually affordable compared to what I've seen. And she's in Michigan, the flight is affordable. Like I have nothing to lose, let me, take this leap and see if this is for me. And I, ever since then, it's just been like to where I am now. Um, but yeah, you were, you were the start of it. I don't think if I came across your video, I don't think I would have, I think I would have missed the train, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I would have done oh it God, now. That's... Yeah. Wow. That's actually like insane. I, it's crazy. It's crazy that like for, it's crazy how like two paths can cross and like, you would have never planned it. Like I didn't, like you're, you're literally in California. Like I would have never, No, I was just thinking like, what do I want to do? Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was calling me. Um, yeah. And it's actually a really, really horrible feeling like to feel like, well, this isn't what I want to do, but I don't know what I want to do. You know? Yeah. And I, I Did you browse. I think you first. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, so browse, it's something that I've always had a passion for. So, uh, I always did like my family's brows for like Thanksgiving. If we all got together, they'd be like, all right, Sarah, do my brows. So it's just, I always got complimented. Oh, you have nice brows. So naturally I was like, all right, you know, I get complimented that my brows look good. I, I do nice brows. So it wasn't like a completely like left field transition, but it was like, okay, there's this might be something I might be good at. Let me try this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think when you first started, like if I can remember, I don't know if you purchased the entire like workshop because I know it came with like an online portion. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you purchased the online one first and then did the workshop or yes. if you just like purchased. Okay, that's what you did. And I always recommend people to do that. And like, just so you can see like the style of teaching, if you resonate with the teacher, if you like, I always say do the online portion portion first and like so many people think that they would just want to jump right into a workshop um like for example like i know you took my workshop and you took another trainer's workshop like let's say you had absolutely zero background knowledge from any online trainings like 
YouTube videos or like paid online like short classes, if you had just jumped into those two without any prior knowledge, like they were already so overwhelming. Like, can you just describe how insanely overwhelming that would be? Yeah. So as a student, I had the same thought. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do online. I want in person. Like, cause I want to be able to ask you questions. What is this? But then after the process is over, I understand why, because it's like, there's so much information, literally, to, like, things that I had no concept of, like, needles, like, hang, and stroke of the machine, and, like, all these technicalities that come with, like, tattooing, that if you were to spend your time teaching that, we wouldn't even get to the brow portion, or the, the classes would be, like, five to two weeks long, and that's fine if that could be an option if you want just in person, but understand that it's going to be a long process. You can't cram like that much information into two days if you really want to get like good at it so the online portion is there to like familiarize yourself with like the basics so after that I understood it so like definitely you you have to you have to do that step first yeah heck yeah I love that you said that I always try to explain to people but they don't relate to me because I'm the teacher I think I lost it for a second oh okay I had yeah, I, I lost you for a second too, yeah. but you came back. But what I was um, saying is I say this to students all the time and I try to explain to them why it's important, but like I'm the teacher. So it's like the equivalent of your mom telling you to eat your broccoli and you're like, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. And so like when I say it, people are like, no, like we are, we just want, we're hands on learners. We want to be there. We want to do a three day workshop. And this is what they think in their mind. They're going to go do a three day workshop. And then after that, they're going to have a studio and fully booked clientele. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I don't know what it is, but they just think it's going to be like a fast process. And OK, like, thanks for the training. I'm good now. This no, is easy. Um, you know what I'm saying? And it's like I'm trying to tell them, like, no, do three to six months online, then come in in person. Then you might have to, like, go see other online trainings and then learn with other people and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and read all the Reddit forums and mm -hmm. um, join a bunch of stuff. And it's an ongoing thing that literally never stops. Like you will never stop learning. Even now, like every time two people go live together on Instagram, like I'm watching the live. I wanna know what they're talking about. I wanna know what they're doing. Like you, you'll, you never know everything. You'll never know everything. So um, I love that you said that, Sarah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> No, definitely. Like looking back, I'm like, oh, I needed a lot of training. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing well now. Like I've, you, you're taking clients and like, um, you know, I'm proud of you, really. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It means a lot, like yeah. coming from you, because I'm telling you when I like you said, I was like so happy and giddy, like to be in class because I really didn't think it was possible, like how it kind of landed in my lab and like how affordable it was you know all, all of that I feel like helped um yeah make it possible yeah okay I love that um well I hope you guys benefited from this episode um because I did I mean I feel pretty happy that I that you shared all this with us like it was really meaningful um what is your instagram tag like if they want to follow you or connect with you i've had any qu questions like mm -hmm. um iconic daisy so icon ink and then daisy you can also find me if you type in um sarah daisy okay yeah that's pretty easy you have such a cute unique name too like i don't feel like i know any other sarah daisies no i mean that's it's my a mom. good name <laughs> i my, love it yeah it's my mom's she it's like a really nice commercial name Thank you. Maybe I was destined. I don't know. <laughs> no, I really like it. Um, Thanks. Okay. Well, so it's Sarah Inc. Uh, no, not Sarah Inc. Icon. <laughs> Icon Inc. Yes. Daisy. What is it? I Icon Inc. Daisy. I so if you wanted to follow her and like keep up with her journey or ask her any questions, I highly recommend that you follow her. And then with us, it's the Beauty Institute. Um, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, 
all of our tags are just Beauty Institute, and you can follow me personally at Shay All Said. So it's just Shay A L S A I D, and you can follow me, follow us there too. I hope this episode inspired you and helped you, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Sarah's journey and how she went, you know, from point A to point B in her career. Um, and she's still transitioning, but you know, it's every milestone it deserves to be celebrated, and every milestone is hard enough to get there. So I wanted to catch up and see where she's at. And um, yeah, again, I'm so proud of you and thank you for being here with us. I appreciate that a lot. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys love this episode and we'll see you next time.